James or Susan? Darren! We have to settle on a name. Sam, how many times have I told you never talk in the middle of somebody's backswing? Sorry. Okay, okay. Now, what was it you asked me? I said we have to settle on a name. We did last night. James if it's a boy and Susan if it's a girl. Yeah, I know, but I thought it over and I've changed my mind. I don't want to settle on just any old name. It, it should be something romantic. How about Romeo if it's a boy and Juliet if it's a girl? Darren, either help me find a name or go play golf. Okay, okay. Uh, how about Scott or Timothy? You'll be disappointed if it isn't a boy, won't you? Don't be silly. Yes, you will. All men want a little boy so they can see themselves walking around. Okay, let's concentrate on boys' names. Oh, hi, sweetheart. I decided I don't want a brother. Well, maybe it'll be a little sister. But you said it would be a baby brother. Well, no, I didn't, sweetheart. Not really. That's something we won't know till after it's born. Don't you like little girls anymore? Oh, sweetheart, of course we do. We love little girls. We were just trying to think of a boy's name in case it's a boy. I understand. Some people like boys better than girls. What do you think? Dr. Spock, we're not. Four cream corn, two pickled onions, two stewed tomatoes, four diced pomegranates. What's all this? I ordered everything early, hoping I'd get it out of the way. If you sit down, I'll fix breakfast. What would you like? Where would you suggest I sit? Sorry. Here, I'll go. <laughs> okay. Who did that? It wasn't Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. <laughs> Andorra, would you mind giving us a little warning when you're going to drop in? All right. I'm dropping in. Fine. Now, would you mind dropping out? No, not at all. Darren. <laughs> Mother dear, would you please come back? I do wish you'd make up your mind. <laughs> Samantha. I no longer can permit you to go on doing these menial chores just because El Chipo refuses to hire a maid. Tell me, Andorra, what was it like at the Tower of Babel? One more word out of you and I'll turn you into a mushroom. Poisonous, of course. As a matter of fact, Samantha, I have found a maid for you, a perfect gem named Esmeralda. And she's not an outsider. Oh, no. One thing we desperately don't need around here is another witch. If you'll stop braying for a minute and listen, I'll tell you why I think you'll find Esmeralda acceptable. She's never been terribly secure. And lately, she's lost her confidence, along with most of her powers. You know, what she wants now is a safe, snug little harbor. Then let her turn herself into a boat. <laughs> Maybe Mother's come up with the answer this time. I, I mean, with, with the new baby coming, we do need some extra help. And Esmeralda not being much of a witch isn't like having another witch in the house at all. Sort of. Forget it. <laughs> Too late. That's Esmeralda. Well, now, now, wait a minute. <laughs> There's nobody here. Hello, Andorra. Oh, hello, Esmeralda. I hope I'm not too early. Oh, no, your timing was perfect. Come in, come on in. <laughs> uh, and this is my daughter, Samantha, and this is him. The model I told you about. How do you do? Oh, now there's nothing to be nervous about. Maybe not for her. <laughs> when she gets tense, she fades. Of course. 
Uh, Esmeralda, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> See, he's not going to bite you. Now, why don't you just relax, Esmeralda? <laughs> Come on into the living room, Miss Marley. Samantha, your mother's got to be kidding. Oh, now, 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 sweetheart, just try to be a little more understanding. She's thinking of my welfare like any other mother. Yeah. Show me another mother who hires an invisible maid. Well, she's, she's only trying to be helpful. Okay. How about this? Show me another mother who sharpens her teeth in the morning. All right, sweetheart, just finish your milk. Then can I have a piece of candy? Tabitha, you know the rule. If you have room for candy, you can finish your lunch. But I only have a little room. It's just big enough for candy. Please, Mommy, just for a special treat. <laughs> Sorry, young lady. But we're both going to have a special treat. Daddy's coming home for lunch. Oh, goody. Daddy will give me some candy. <laughs> Yes, of course. Oh, your father's going to be home any second, and I don't have lunch anywhere near ready. Can I help, Mommy? Uh, no, sweetheart. But I know who can. Esmeralda. You, -hoo! Esmeralda. Yes, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> Hi, Esmeralda. Hi, sweetheart. Esmeralda, you don't have anything to be nervous about. Is Mr. Stevens home? No. Good. But he'll be here any minute. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, Esmeralda, you, you're being very foolish. Mr. Stevens likes you. A lot. It's just that, well, he gets a little upset when you fade out. And I really do need your help right now. All right. What do you want me to do? Well, uh, will you take Tabitha upstairs and change her? Why, sure. Who do you want me to change her into? <laughs> I mean, change her dress. Oh, I know what. Do you know how to make a Caesar salad? I certainly do. Good. Well, you do that. I'll take care of Tabitha. Now, the lettuce is all washed and everything he needs right on the sink. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, what a mess. Well, I'll change that upstairs. Caesar salad. Uh, it should be easy. Ippity bippity, salad greens, oil vinegar, chi chi beans. I call on Caesar's eternal soul here and now to fill this bowl. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Don't tell me. You're Caesar, right? What manner of place is this? How came I here? I don't know how came you here. The important thing is, how do I get rid of you? Sam, I'm home. Oh, dear. <laughs> OK, I've got it all worked out. What's that? The alternate plan, in case I'm not here when it's time to go to the hospital. What's wrong with calling a cab? Oh, it's too unreliable. They might not have one available, or uh, the driver might have a hard time finding the address, or oh, who knows what. <laughs> now, the first one you call is Mr. Lutkins next door, because he's almost always home now that his wife is visiting her mother. If by some chance uh, he's not there, you're to call Mrs. Grand down the block. But you let the phone ring for a while, because she spends a lot of time out in a rose garden. Now, if she's out, you try the Henrys, then the Goodalls, uh, the Harpers, and the Cushmans. By the time I make all those calls, it may be too late to get to the hospital. Never mind. Just keep this list handy. Any more of that chocolate cake left? I'm oh, sorry, sweetheart. We finished the last of it at dinner. I could eat another piece myself. Oh, uh, honey, when you go to the doctor tomorrow for your checkup... I thought you said there's no more chocolate cake. There wasn't. What's that? Chopped liver? Darren, I don't know where it came from. You don't? How about... Absolutely not. If I had, I would have zapped it all a mode. Where did it come from? I don't know. Maybe Mother sent it to me as a gift. You want half? Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. After all, you're eating for two. 
I'll just take a third. <laughs> in the driveway with the motor open and the door running. Oh, that, that's good. How do you feel? Oh, uh, I feel fine. And the important thing is not to panic. You're not the first woman to have a baby and you won't be the last. <laughs> yes, sweetheart, and it's not even my first baby. <laughs> oh, Dr. Anton. We forgot to call Dr. Anton. No, 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 no. I called him before I woke you up. He's meeting us at the hospital. Oh, good. Yeah. Tabitha! Who's gonna stay with Tabitha? Esmeralda, I you hooed for her. She's up in the guest room prepared for duty. Well, in that case, we took care of everything. Uh, yes, uh, we did. Uh -huh. Darren. Not the sweetheart. Will you get in the car? We're wasting time. Just one quick question. A what? Shouldn't I drive? In your condition? I was thinking about your condition. Don't be silly. I'll drive. Sam, what are you doing? My folks specifically asked you didn't go to any trouble. After all, you've only been home from the hospital a week. Oh, sweetheart, I'm feeling fine, and I'm just making a few little appetizers. I have to serve them something. Well, you know how they are. They don't want to feel like they're imposing. <laughs> Unlike some members of your family, who shall go nameless. Samantha, my darling, how are you? Just fine, Mother. It's a pleasure to see you, Endor, and it's a shame you can't stay. And how is my adorable new grandson? Thriving. And Darren is talking to you. Who? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you, Durwood. Thanks. And the name is Darren? That's your problem. Now, stop it, both of you. No, that's all right, my dear. I only came to see my grandson and warn you about something that affects his attitude. Oh, warn, warn us about what? Your father. He's coming to see his new grandson. When? Today. What? And now that I've delivered my message, I think I'll toddle along. I don't want to be around when Maurice finds out. Finds out what? That you didn't name the baby after him. But we did. Frank Maurice Stevens. Oh, Samantha, you have a delicious sense of humor. Do you think for one second your father will take second billing to anyone? Mother. Mm. Dear. You're the only one who can handle Daddy. Won't you please stay? Are you kidding? My folks are going to be here in less than an hour. They are. Sam. Oh, sweetheart, now don't worry. Once Daddy arrives, no one will dare pay attention to anything else. You sure know how to relax a guy. <laughs> oh, Mommy, it's beautiful. I'll be the most beautiful princess on the whole block. Well, certainly hope so. Every other child on the block's a boy. Am I going to have a crown? Yes, as soon as Daddy's shirts come back from the laundry. Daddy's shirts? Yes. I need the cardboard out of them to make your crown. Oh. Then I'm going to get some sparkle paint, and I'll put lots of jewels and things on it. Bill! Oh! Oh! Goodness! Did I scare you? Yeah. A witch that looks like that would scare anybody. Would I get more treats if I go trick-or-treating as an ugly old witch? Oh, probably. But you and I know that witches don't look like that. They're just the same as everybody else. Almost. I don't know why we just don't tell everyone we're witches. Then they'll find out what wonderful, nice people we are. Well, I I'm afraid that's out of the question. People don't really think there are such things as witches. So we'll just have to keep our little secret, okay? Okay. <laughs> Mommy, can I wear this crown instead of the cardboard one? 
Mother! What makes you think I did that? It could have been something she ate. Just send it back where it came from. Oh. I don't see why a granddaughter of mine should have to wear a crown made of shirt cardboard and sparkle paint. Don't you worry, sweetheart. You're gonna have a beautiful crown. Samantha? Samantha? What's the meaning of all this? Mother, you know perfectly well that those are Halloween costumes. Perfectly harmless and unrealistic and discriminatory against a minority group. <laughs> you of all people. Tabitha, why don't you run upstairs and play? I think maybe Grandmama would like to have a little talk. <laughs> Samantha, will you please explain the meaning of these dunce caps and these hideous masks? Well, uh, Mother, it's all for a good cause. I I'm helping out on the trick-or-treat for UNICEF committee, and I, I was just making some of the costumes for the neighborhood kids. Oh, that's a tawdry excuse. I know very well who's behind this. It's Durwood. He's brainwashed you. Easy, Mother Darren will hear you. I heard her. I heard her. There's more. There's more. I absolutely refuse to let my daughter participate in this barbaric mortal holiday that has maligned our image for centuries. Mother, may I remind you that I am perfectly free to do whatever I wish. Oh, just as long as whatever you wish is whatever he wishes you to do. That is not true. Mother, it's really very simple. I agreed to live in this mortal world, and as long as Halloween is part of that world... I know, I know, I know. You took your vows for better or for worse, and you certainly are getting the worst. Now, just a minute, Aunt Dora. You must realize that Mother tends to get a little upset this upset? time of he... Upset? I'm not upset, I'm incensed. To think that you, Samantha, would participate in depicting your own kind as toothless old hags with scraggly eyebrows and stringy hair and an evil cackle. Oh, no, don't forget the wart on the end of a long, crooked nose uh. that she keeps sticking into everybody else's business. <laughs> Samantha, I will not stand here and be insulted by something that's 90% water. Oh, oh yeah? Well, how about something that's 100% hot air? <laughs> Will you please tell what's his name? He's finally pushed me too far. She says you finally Samantha, pushed... will you please tell Madame Defarge that you happen to be my wife? And the Tabitha happens to be my daughter. And if we choose to celebrate Halloween tomorrow night and every other night of the week, it's our business and she has nothing to say about it. You noticed she had nothing to say. <laughs> You'd think they'd invented a device for doing this. They have. It's called a daddy. You're sure that none of your relatives are liable to pop in? Darren, I told you, they're invited to a mask ball in Tasmania. It's the event of the year. They're all going. <laughs> You know, you're turning purple. <laughs> and it's not your best color. <laughs> Hiya, Sammy. Hi there, Uncle Arthur. Hey, weren't you invited to the ball? No, the Count's still sore at me. Because the last time I was there, I nailed one of his shoes to the floor as a joke. That's funny. It was when I gave him a hot foot. In fact, it was a scream. <laughs> sure. Anyway, I'd much rather come to Tabitha's birthday party. I love parties. I I'm just a kid at heart, you know. <laughs> yes, you've made that abundantly clear through the years. Don't start with me, fella. Cause in a battle of wits, you're unarmed. <laughs> Here's one for you, Sammy. A famous character in history. Give up? Uh-huh. Napoleon Balloonapart. <laughs> Sam, it took me over an hour to blow up those balloons. <laughs> what a waste of hot air. <laughs> Uncle 
bother. Tabitha is on the patio. She's setting up the pin the tail on the donkey game. Uh, would you like to help her? Love to. No hard feelings? Of course not. For a mortal, you have very few faults. Oh, thanks. But you certainly make the most of the ones you do have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, what a couple of stiffs. Oh, well. Tabitha! Your favorite uncle's here. Oh, Samantha, I'm so glad I found you in. Oh, good morning, Mother. How many guesses do I get? It's for a masquerade party that the Duchess is throwing. Sam, I haven't got much time for breakfast, so skip the eggs and... <coughs> and skip the breakfast, too. Good morning, Andorra. You simply must come with me. It'll be your first vacation since the baby arrived. Mother, Darren said good morning. Who? <laughs> oh, him. Ah, oh, hurry, darling, or we'll be late. I'll forgive your rudeness, Andorra. I know you're just being yourself. <laughs> there is an annoying vibration somewhere in this house, and I wish it would go away. <laughs> Now, we're all supposed to dress as nursery rhymes. I'm going as the knave of hearts. But I must find a mask. What's wrong with the one you're wearing? You don't zip your lip. May I remind you that... I will. <laughs> Mother, you unzip him immediately. <laughs> Certainly. As soon as we decide what costume you're going to wear to the ball. I refuse even to discuss it until you remove that. <laughs> Oh, drat. Damn that spinal, you old. Oh, Darren, what was that? I am sick and tired of your mother's barging in here unannounced. Now, the Constitution guarantees each man the right to protect his home against invaders, so hear this and hear it good. Your mother is no longer welcome in this house. Darren, you, you can't do that to mother. I can and I will. What? And that's final. <laughs> oh, uh, m m mother? Now, now, Mother, you, you're, you're not going to lose your temper, are, are you? You are going to lose your temper. <laughs> Mother, you have to remember that Darren is a man. A mortal man with a mortal man's pride. And you've wounded him once too often. You say he's a man? I say he's a mouse. That's not true. We'll see. What do you mean by that? I'll give him until midnight to withdraw his ultimatum. If he does, he's a man. If he doesn't, he's a mouse. <gasps> you, you, you wouldn't dare. Permanently. You would. Darren? What kind of eggs would you like? How about chicken eggs? Ho, oh, oh. ho. Fried or scrambled? Surprise me. Love you. <laughs> What's the matter, love? <laughs> Missed your mommy, huh? <laughs> I am a prisoner in an egg foo young factory. <laughs> okay, who's the smart aleck witch? You owe me one egg. I hardly think that's a proper way to address your father. Oh, Daddy, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought maybe it was Mother or Serena. I hardly expected you to make such a quiet entrance. I didn't want to disturb. How is the little prince? Just fine. Looking more like you every day. Just for that, my darling daughter, I'm going to bestow on you the highest honor at my disposal. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Daddy. Hello there, little Adam. Mm. <laughs> Why, he is just thriving, isn't he? Oh, incidentally, before I left London, I entered him for membership in the Warlock Club. <laughs> at the age of ten weeks? Well, it's never too early. Before you know it, he'll be a man. And a man never knows when he's going to want to spend the night in town. If he isn't a member of the club, he'll have to stay in an hotel, and we can't have that, can we? <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> and how is little Tabitha? As radiant as her mother, I hope. She's taking a walk with Esmeralda. 
Why don't you stay for breakfast? You can see her later. Love to. I'll have uh, champagne and caviar. <laughs> A beluga caviar, of course. Uh, caught off the north shore of the Caspian in the month of May. And uh, the champagne... I'm sorry. But we're fresh out of champagne and caviar from anywhere. Nonsense. You can't be fresh out of anything as long as you have your powers. Oh, Daddy, stop it. You know that witchcraft's off limits around here. Except in extreme emergencies. But this is an emergency. I'm dying for some caviar and champagne. Well, you haven't lived until you've tasted a handmade breakfast. <laughs> you know the trouble around here is ego. Plain, unvarnished, mortal ego. Your husband doesn't want you to use your natural powers because it makes him feel inferior. But I tell you unequivocally that if he had those same powers, his, his objections would vanish in a flash. I don't agree. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. Company for breakfast. <laughs> Daddy's always a wonderful surprise. Well, 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 how good to see you, Dustbin. Darren, <laughs> it's been far too long since our last meeting. No, I wouldn't say that. Darren? Daddy's going to join us for breakfast. Terrific. Samantha's <laughs> looking absolutely fabulous, my boy. No doubt due to your tender, loving care. You know your mother's quite wrong about him. Sit down. <laughs> sit down. Thank you, sir. Why so formal? Call me Maurice. OK. Maurice. Or Dad. <laughs> OK. Dad. You were right. Sir is best. <laughs> For breakfast. I think we're having fatted calf. I have a little surprise for you, Daryl. Darren, in honor of the arrival of my first grandson. That really wasn't necessary, Maurice. Sir? <laughs> Sir? That watch is waterproof, anti-magnetic, and has built-in aircraft radar. Well, it's really very handsome. It's shockproof, too. I don't know what to say. But best of all, you can perform witchcraft with it. <laughs> now I know what to say. <laughs> no, thank you. Now look, Darwood. Darren. <laughs> what's wrong with using the watch just to tell the time? You didn't mention it could do that. Now, Dusty, my boy. It's Darren, my boy. Thank you. Daddy, if he doesn't want it, why force him? Why does he have to be such a dog in the manger? He's no such thing. He's a man of principle. You mean he was a man of principle? <laughs> Daddy, that is unfair, unreasonable, and downright despicable. Yes, isn't it? I order you to change... You what? <laughs> I, I mean, I... I beg you to change him back. <laughs> oh, look, isn't that sweet? The doggie's begging, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Uh, you, you looked so cute, I got carried away. <laughs> uh, you're going to find this next activity very amusing, young man. It's called Making Daddy's Breakfast. <laughs> now, we are going to make French toast. French toast is, well, it isn't French and it isn't toast, and that gives you an idea of what you're going to be up against in this world. <laughs> Yes, Daddy. Thanks for the mess. Anytime. May I have my egg back? <laughs> Thanks. I pop in to see how your father's enjoying his gift of infinite power, and what do I find? Daddy, Darren agreed to accept your gift for only one day. I'm sure by now he's back to normal. Ah, but you forget how easy it was to persuade him to use my magic gift. Let me refresh your memory. Shall we tune in the refrigerator? <laughs> now, just a few simple instructions. You hold the watch, you concentrate on where you want to be, and you say, 
Zolda, Prank, and Kopeck, Lum. Zolda, Prank, and Kopeck, Lum? That was a dirty trick! Ah, <laughs> uh, he was beautiful, Samantha. You should have seen him zapping and popping like an old pro, especially when he popped into the client's office to get some inside information. That wasn't cricket. No, it was eavesdropping. I don't believe you. Uh, Darren, how did you get that inside info? Larry, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> you son of a gun. <laughs> Today, Bliss Pharmaceutical. Tomorrow, the world. <laughs> now tell me that isn't the look of a man who sees the open door to fame and fortune. No. No, that is the look of a man who is trying to satisfy the wishes of his father-in-law for one day. I'm sure by now he's back to normal. I don't think so, Samantha. It's like pâté de foie gras. Once you've tasted it, you can't stop. As the boys say on Carnaby Street, he's hooked. <laughs> we'll see. Darren's different. So you keep saying. Good morning, Adam. Hello, Maurice. Good morning, my boy. Sweetheart, what's for breakfast? French toast. Oh. What do you mean, oh? Well, I had my taste buds set for something a little more uh, exotic, like eggs Florentine, perhaps? Yeah, that might be good. And truffles and cafe au lait. Now, that's what I call a proper breakfast. Sorry, Darren, but this kitchen is fresh out of truffles. Now, I know one that's not. The Café Cher Henri in Paris. Oh, I don't think I have the time. I have an appointment at the office. Darren. Why don't you let me whip you up some French toast mortal style? I've got it. If he won't go to Henri's, he merely uses his powers to bring Henri's to him. Say the magic words. Concentrate on Chez Henri. Of course. <laughs> Zolda, Prankan, Kopeck, Lum. <laughs> You feed your face while I feast my eyes. You must admit, your father has a gourmet's taste in food. And a playboy's taste in service. Yeah, a kindly word from my devoted daughter. Come on, let's all have breakfast. What have we here? Samantha? Uh, no, thanks. Well, what about these tasty morsels? I'd put sweaters on them if I were you. They look a little chilly. <laughs> ah, then let's see. I've got a feeling in my bones this is the day I'm going to lower my handicap. I hope you do, sweetheart. Gee, Sam, I know you're up during the night with the baby. I, I feel like a heel running off and leaving you. Don't be silly. Saturday is your day. Live it up. Just say the word and I'll stay and give you a hand. I wouldn't dream of it. I really wouldn't mind. Darren, will you go out there and lower your handicap while the lowering is good? <laughs> Talk me into it. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope you get a caddy that snickers. <laughs> Mommy, will you read Mother Goose to me? Oh, I can't, sweetheart. I'm ironing Daddy's shirts. Please, I love Mother Goose. <laughs> then why don't you read the pictures? Okay, Mommy, if you'll read the words, please. Well, all right, sweetheart. But just for a little while. <laughs> The cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Mommy, why did the dish run away with the spoon? Well, I guess it was... Or, or maybe. Well, let's see. The dish ran away with the spoon... Because. Because what? Because. <laughs> Oh, dear. Your little brother's awake. 
and hungry. He's not hungry, Mommy. He's just crying for fun. Want to hear me cry louder than Adam? Uh, no, thank you, sweetheart. I can. Yes, I know. And if you're not careful, you may get a chance to prove it. I'm just kidding, Mommy. I know what, Tabitha. While I check on Adam, how would you like Esmeralda to come and read to you? I'd like that. I thought so. You who? Esmeralda? Yes, Samantha? Hi, Esmeralda. Hi, Tabitha, sweetheart. Well, I'm glad you brought your reading glasses. Uh, now, could you just bring the rest of you? First, uh, tell me who else is at home. Darren is playing golf. Oh, then I guess it's safe. Esmeralda, do you like Mother Goose? Does she like me? <laughs> I'm sure she would if she met you. Uh, if you'll read to Tabitha, I'll tend to Adam's appetite. Oh, I'd love to, Samantha. All right. It's a good book for reading. It has lots of pictures. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, Mrs. Stevens. How are you? You are? You do? Right away? Well, um, as a matter of fact, I, I am rather busy. Oh, well, I if it's an emergency, perhaps you better come over and tell me about it. Say, in a couple of hours? You're at the corner drugstore. Oh, well, all, all right, Mrs. Stevens, I'll expect you. Bye-bye. Grief. Mother Goose. Mother Goose? Well, now, let me see. Mother Goose was, um... Uh, Mother Goose was... Uh, Mother... Oh. oh, dear me. I've done it again. I've just got to knock off that sneezing. Mother Goose! Oh, yes, I'm Mother Goose. But who are you, child? You can't be Miss Muffet. You have no tuffet. I'm Tabitha. How did I get here? Well, you see, I'm a witch, but my powers have sort of gone fluey. So sometimes when I sneeze or hiccup, the involuntary act generates abnormal powers which materialize the thought nearest my cerebellum. I knew there would be a simple explanation. <laughs> It's Mother Stars. Oh, How nice to see you, Mistress Mary. Are you quite contrary? I'll say I'm quite contrary. You're mad. No, I'm, I'm just... Mad? I don't blame you. I'm so embarrassed. Oh, Esmeralda, please don't go. I'll be right down. Oh. done what you did if you hadn't done what you did. Well, I, I just got tired running up and down that ladder, and I, I lost my head. Sam, when are you Sweetheart, going... Sweetheart, oh, oh, why don't you just go out and come back, and we'll forget this ever happened. <laughs> Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning, sweetheart. I'll bet you don't know what today is. Well, let's see. It's too late for Groundhog Day and too early for National Frankfurter Week. 
What day is it? It's exactly three days, eight hours, and 45 minutes since your mother last inflicted herself on us. <laughs> now, Darren, I, I know Mother can be a bit difficult, but... All right. All right, she can be a lot difficult, but she is my mother, and she's not without a certain charm. I had hoped that you might come to like her a little. No, I like her a little. Very little. <laughs> I guess what bugs me the most is the way she barges in without any advance notice. Well... <laughs> Advance notice. I am barging. Endora. Darren, for once, try to be agreeable. No matter what she says, just agree, please. Okay. But believe me, it won't help. Samantha, my love, how are you? Oh, I'm sorry if I disturbed your stupor. <laughs> Good morning, Endora. How nice you dropped in. You're a sight for sore eyes that brightens an otherwise bleak morning. Keep that up and you'll be a monkey's uncle. Darren, you'll be late for work. Yes, but it's worth it to make your mother feel welcome. Endora, won't you sit down and rest your weary bones? That does it. Now he's saying I'm too decrepit to stand. Sweetheart, you can't win. Why don't you go to work? Okay. Bye, sweetheart. Bye, Endora. Oh! You lay a lip on me and I'll put you in orbit for the rest of your life. I was just reaching for my paper. <laughs> what in the name of all that's witchly has gotten into him? Nothing. Darren happens to be an extremely agreeable person. <laughs> Everyone thinks so. His business associates, his friends, everyone but you. Now, don't you think you might be wrong? Why? Columbus was the only one that thought the world was round, and he was right. <laughs> oh, it's no use. Excuse me, Mother. Yes. <laughs> so agreeable, is he? Well, if he really were, he'd take a nice, long, one-way trip. <laughs> or maybe... I'll zap him into such an agreeable state, he'll be utterly sickening. <laughs> that was Mrs. Kravitz. She had this crazy civic improvement petition. I told her I wouldn't sign it without consulting you. I'd better duck out the back way. And I'm going to give Adam his bottle. Bye-bye. Bye. Just going out the back way. Saying goodbye to you once is bad enough, but twice is revolting. Endora, I'd love to stay in Bicker, but... Bees, knees, and bells, Nell, hearken to my tricky spell. To prove your brains the size of a pea, with all you hear, you will agree. Excuse me, gotta run. Oh, wait. Oh, see how cloudy it is? It might rain. Yeah, it might. I'd better get an umbrella. Oh, what ever for? There isn't a cloud in the sky. You're absolutely right. Bye-bye, <laughs> Andorra. Goodbye, Darewood. Good luck. <laughs> Ooh, it's going to be such fun. I want you to look over there and see the pretty tree. See the pretty tree with all the lights and everything? There's some presents down there, too. That's going to be fun. Oh, my goodness. Hey, catch you under the mistletoe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Aren't they pretty? Red and yellow and green and blue and all sorts of colors. Well, come on and tell me about it. Yeah. All the pretty Christmas lights. Oh, oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Babies are such a nice way to start people. Mommy! Mommy! Oh, but they do grow up, don't they? I'm never going to play with Sydney again. He's mean and terrible. Oh, my. Now, what has Sydney done that is so terrible? He said there was no Santa Claus. 
Oh. Even after I told him we know Santa, and you've been to his house at the North Pole, he still didn't believe me. <laughs> Tabitha. Now, don't you remember what I've told you about our little secrets? If you tell them to someone else, they won't be secrets anymore. I'm sorry, Mommy, but that terrible old Cindy just made me mad. <laughs> Sweetheart, everyone is entitled to believe in what they want. Now, if, if they don't want to believe, that's all right, too. Now, when it comes to Santa Claus, most mortals don't believe he exists, just like they don't believe in witches. Now, do you understand? Uh-huh. Which reminds me. I am going to get Esmeralda to come and help out for a few days. Goody! Yoo-hoo, Esmeralda! <laughs> Hello, Samantha. Is, um... No. Uh, no, he's not home from work yet. Oh, good. <laughs> Esmeralda, I'm a little behind in my shopping. Would you mind uh, staying a couple of days? Always a pleasure. Hello, my little princess. Hello, Esmeralda. And how is my handsome little warlock? Just about to have his lunch. And incidentally, there's a 50-50 chance he might be mortal, you know. Oh, there he is. Poor thing. It would be such a, such a... Esmeralda, <laughs> don't! Hi, Esmeralda! <laughs> What'd you get this time? Uh, do you think the baby would like a bottle of goat's milk? <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Uh, when Darren gets home, try and stay out of drafts. <laughs> oh, you didn't tell me he was coming home. Well, that's what he usually does when he gets through work. Oh, my. Esmeralda, uh, why don't you take Tabitha upstairs and get started with her bath? All right. Come along, dearie. <laughs> See? That is a goat. <laughs> See? That was a goat. Well, Esmeralda's witchcraft may not be very good, but it doesn't last. How about that? How about that? You think that was funny? Did you think that was funny? I don't know how you can sit there so calmly. This will be our first real vacation in five years. Do you realize where we'll be tomorrow night at this time? Mm hmm Sitting under a Caribbean moon with no thoughts of diapers, dinners, or demand feedings. Yeah, we'll be guzzling exotic rum drinks a thousand miles away from layouts, business lunches, and Larry. Do you realize that he is the reason we haven't had a vacation in five years? Somehow he always manages to work it out so that we can't go. Yeah, well, not this time. We're leaving tomorrow morning. I just have a feeling the phone's going to ring any minute. There. You see? That's the doorbell. Oh. Forget it. Huh? We're going on our vacation, and nothing you can do is going to stop us. Bravo! <laughs> Have you two gone bananas? Is this the way you treat someone who's come all this way to wish you bon voyage? Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. I uh, guess we both lost our heads. <laughs> yes. We're both a little lightheaded. <laughs> Don't blame you. You're going to have a terrific time, I know. I can't think of two people who deserve it more. Yeah, it's darn nice of you. Mm. Louise sends her best. Oh, well, thank her. How is she? Fair. Fair? She's got a little uh, upper respiratory something. Oh, well, that's a shame. I, mean, I kind of hate to leave you, but uh, first thing tomorrow morning, uh, off I go to Chicago. Can't you take her with you? Uh-uh. She's not well enough to travel. Why don't you put off the trip to Chicago? Well, don't you remember? The only reason I'm going is because you couldn't. Oh, yeah. But listen, I didn't come here to burden you. Just brought a little going-away present. Oh. It's a portable bar <gasps> to make those carefree, happy moments even happier and carefreer. Oh, How about that? Wow. that Larry, that's very mm. sweet. It's on the company. <laughs> well, I've got to go. I have to stop by the pharmacy and pick up a prescription. <laughs> 
Sam, I'd appreciate it if you'd look in on Louise while I'm... <laughs> oh, what's the matter with me? You won't even be here. <laughs> Maybe I'll call my mother and ask her to... No, she'd only make Louise feel worse. <laughs> well, Louise is used to being alone. As long as the phone is working and she can reach the doctor in an emergency, that's all that... Larry? Yes? You want me to go to Chicago for you, don't you? Where'd you ever get an idea like that? <laughs> oh, he just made a wild stab. Believe me, the, the thought never entered my mind. Unless, uh, wait a minute. You mean you'd make a stop in Chicago on your way to the Caribbean? Chicago is on the way to the Caribbean only if you're going around the world first. <laughs> sure, I was just dreaming. <laughs> Well, have a ball. Think of me on the icy streets of Chicago. <laughs> I will be leaving till 10 in the morning, <laughs> just for your information, in case you need anything. <laughs> Good night, you two beautiful people. <laughs> Do you believe it? Only because I heard it. And I think before we leave, we're going to hear it again. Well, as far as I'm concerned, he's just shouting down a rain barrel. At least we got a portable bar out of it. Just the same, it's going to be interesting to see who's on that plane to Chicago tomorrow morning. I guarantee you it won't be me. Unless there's a way I can be in two places at the same time. Darren, shh. Who's going to hear me? The walls have ears. And so has my mother. Remember what happened the last time you said you couldn't be in two places at once. Remember? It'd be easier to forget my name. It did have its funny side, too. You were so anxious for me to get to that hospital on time to have that baby that you didn't even want to go to work. There I was bragging the mother about what a devoted husband you are when you barged in and announced... Sam, I don't know how to tell you this, but, uh... Well, I have to fly to Japan this afternoon. Japan? Well, it's only for a few days. And only this morning he didn't want to leave you to go to the office. Oh. <laughs> What a difference a day makes. I tried everything I could to get out of it. I reasoned, I argued, I... You did everything but refuse. I couldn't refuse, Sam. Mr. Tanaka, president of Tanaka Enterprises, is going back to Japan today. And if I make the trip with him, we'll be able to go over my layouts on the plane, and it might just clinch the deal. Sweetheart, you have no choice. Go. Yes, go. Samantha will be in the best possible hands. I won't leave her side for a minute. That settles it. I'm staying. Oh, now, Darren, I feel marvelous. Just perfect. You go to Japan, land the account, and don't worry about a thing. Sam, I'm not going. Well, what kind of a man does Larry think I am? Why, well, only an insensitive oaf would go to Japan at a time like this. In that case, bon voyage. And give my regards to the gin. <laughs> Mother. Tabitha? Are you playing with the hose? Yes, Mommy, I'm watering my sand. <laughs> we'll discuss this in a minute, over lunch. I think I'll make lunch. Sam looks tired. That money-mad boss of yours won't exactly love it if you don't show up on that plane. Well, let him fire me. Sam is more important to me than any job. Too bad you can't be in two places at once. Well, we can't have everything. <laughs> That's one thing we mortals learned to accept long ago. Atoms split, and so can man. Be in both places, here and Japan. One for the money, two for the show. Doting husbands stay, businessmen go. says we can't have everything. Oh, I... Oh, Tabitha, come on. Adam ate almost all of his lunch. Now you finish yours so we can go shopping for some shoes. You, Esmeralda. Hello, Samantha. Is, um, 
Yes, but he'll be leaving in a minute. Oh, good. Hello, Tabitha. Hello, Esmeralda. Esmeralda, would you mind babysitting while I take Tabitha to get some shoes? And while Darren goes to the driving range to hit some golf balls. Or at least to swing at them. <laughs> Hello, Esmeralda. How nice to see you, for a change. <laughs> Darren. Oh, what I meant was, it's always nice to see you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Samantha, have you seen my golf glove? Isn't it with your clubs? No, and it's not upstairs. Then it must be downstairs. <laughs> I'll help you look for it. Tabitha, please finish your lunch. I'm not hungry. Sweetheart, you've been saying that an awful lot lately. I think it's psychological. I think it's related to her feelings uh, toward the new B-A-B-Y. That spells baby. <laughs> Smart, isn't she? <laughs> Tabitha, will you please eat your lunch? No, I don't want to. Young lady, you'll finish everything on your plate or you'll go straight to your room. <laughs> Gave her a choice. <laughs> Let's go look for your golf club. She's expressing her emotions of rivalry by refusing to eat. I wish I could help her. But I can. I'll break through her appetite barrier by casting a spell on her milk. As a trumpet sounds with a shimmering beat, she who drinks this will crave to eat. Sweetheart. Where is that book you were studying called How to Line Up Your Fourth Putt? That was called How to Improve Your Swing. Sounds like the same thing to me. On the TV set, why? Just playing a hunch. <laughs> like a rose you were saving from your first dance. Thanks. See you later. Have fun. Esmeralda, where are you headed? Oh, I'm taking Tabitha her milk. Uh, never mind. But her little stomach's empty. And her little stubborn streak cannot go unpunished, so she will stay in her room for at least a good ten minutes. <laughs> I'll put her milk in the refrigerator so it doesn't go to waste. Oh, it won't go to waste. <laughs> Samantha, you drank Tabitha's milk. So it wasn't wasted. It wasn't intended for you. Oh, that's all right. It's all in the family. Well, no sense in wasting a perfectly good lunch. <laughs> <laughs> the spell that hit you by mistake be now removed for both our sake. <laughs> Since you and Tabitha aren't ready to leave yet, could I run a fast errand? Mm, sure. Mm, this is delicious. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, as long as Adam didn't finish his strained carrots. <laughs> now, we're going to try another one, all right? You've been very smart. Now, you have five apples, right? You get one, two, three more apples. How many apples do you have? Eight apples. That's very good. Now, think carefully. You have eight apples. Now, take away two apples. How many apples are left? Take away two apples. That's easy, Mommy. <laughs> You saw that? I saw that. Well, how you like them apples? 
Sam, what's going on? New math. <laughs> All right, Tabitha, bring back the apples. Yes, sweetheart, those wine saps cost 35 cents a pound. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tabitha. Well, lesson's over, sweetheart. Darren, I really do think she's ready for kindergarten. I think she's ready for the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> Good morning, dear child. My precious Tabitha. Hello, Grandma. Good morning, Darwin. It was, wasn't it? Mother, Darren and I are having an important discussion, so if you don't mind... Of course I don't mind. What is more important than Tabitha's education? Fortunately, I have solved your problem. May I present Professor Poindexter Phipps? Forget it, Endora. Tabitha is not having a warlock for a teacher. Why not? She has a witch for a mother. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, this is my daughter, Samantha. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? And you must be Derwood. Try Darren. Apple <laughs> for the teacher. Good form for a mortal. <laughs> Sam, I want to talk to you. When? Now. Oh, excuse us. <laughs> Yes, sweetheart? I just heard it. Oh, sweetheart, Mother was just trying to be helpful. And you will admit it's time Tabitha was getting a formal education, won't you? And now, Sam... Who could be more qualified to teach a young witch thirsting for knowledge than a warlock? Well, I guess it can't hurt to try. But only if you promise the professor will teach Tabitha in a perfectly normal, perfectly mortal way. I promise. Which is honor? <laughs> uh, I mean... Right. <laughs> you who Mother, I'm sorry I'm late, but the stores were jammed. <laughs> Bonjour, Samantha. Mother, I have had a tough day shopping. Karen is coming home early from work, and I'd like to get dinner started. So, if you don't mind. I would like to have my old furniture back. You should expect me to babysit. It's going to have to be in the grand style to which I am accustomed. As far as Darren and I are concerned, our old furniture is grand enough. Oh, Samantha, the Salvation Army wouldn't even send a truck out for it. Where is your breeding, your culture, your upbringing, darling? I still have those, Mother. Only my furniture is gone. <laughs> but not for long. <laughs> oh, Samantha, I don't understand you. You could be living in the lap of luxury instead of on the bony knees of poverty. <laughs> I happen to like bony knees. <laughs> Samantha, I'm still a guest in your home, and happy surroundings make a happy guest. Mother, your babysitting chores are over, and so is your horsing around with my living room. <laughs> oh, uh, M Mrs., um, uh, uh, my mother, you, you know Darren's m mother. Mrs. How's your chin? It's better. Well, that's good. Maybe the next time I tell you you're too young to fly, you'll pay attention to me. <laughs> Mommy, can we go to the play park this afternoon? Oh, not today, sweetheart. I have a lot to do. But I want to go to the play park. So do I, sweetheart. But I told you I have too much to do. I have to finish feeding Adam, and I have to give him his bath, put him down for his nap, and then their diapers to fold. Why can't Esmeralda do all that? Because Esmeralda isn't here, and because Mommy should do those things. Sweetheart, I just finished the revisions on the Nickerson account, and I got a meeting with him at 2, so I better run. See you at dinner, big fella. May I have ice cream cone? Certainly. As soon as I'm through feeding Adam. <laughs> that does it, young lady. You know you're not supposed to do things like that. But you said I can have ice cream cone. 
And Mommy also said she'd get it for you right after Adam finished his lunch. That's not fair. <laughs> Sweetheart, don't you understand you have to share Mommy now that you have a little brother? May I go to my room now? I thought you wanted an ice cream cone. I don't want it anymore. Then you can go to your room and stay there. <laughs> Women start to get difficult early in life, don't they? Well, really? She'll be all right. I'll look in on her later. I better run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say hello to Mr. Nickerson for me and good luck. Thanks, honey. Oh, well. <laughs> well, you want a bite, too? No, bite. Come on, go on. I wish, I wish, I wish I had my very own special mommy that I don't have to share with anyone. Hi, Tabitha. Are you my very own special mommy that I don't have to share with anyone? I'm the mommy you wished for. Come on, let's play a game or something. Don't you have to take care of the baby? What baby? <laughs> 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 Well, it gets awful Larry's making you work on Sunday. He knows it's your regular golf day. Well, by tomorrow morning, I've got to come up with something ingenious for the top pop account or it's going out the window. If it does, I may be next. You mean Larry threatened you again? Not in so many words. He just said he'd hate to see a man with such a bright future get shot down. <laughs> I see. You just read between the lines, huh? Mm, right. Well, at least you could work out on the patio and get some sun. Sam, I'm fine. You could use it. Sam. I'm going. Hi, gorgeous. <laughs> Sam. Got a riddle for you. What's worse than finding a worm in an apple? Finding you in the mirror. No, finding half a worm. See, half a worm is worse than a whole worm because... Oh, forget it. Yes, Darren, what is it? Uncle Arthur. Hi, Sammy. You get out of there this minute. Didn't have anything better to do, so I thought I'd drop in and see you and the old point killer. I said out. Okay, okay. <laughs> what happened? For your information, this mirror happens to be a valuable antique. Somebody took you. Sam, don't get your giblets in an uproar. I'll have it back together in a jiffy. <laughs> Take another little, Jeffy. <laughs> Uncle Arthur, is there something the matter with you? Of course not. Th that mirror must have a hex on it. You've got another mirror in the hall, haven't you? Oh, now, wait a minute. I don't think that's such a good idea. Watch this, Sammy. Then tell me I'm slipping. <laughs> Another one of your antiques? It is now. Uh, Uncle Arthur, maybe you're coming down with something and it's affecting your powers. Please let me call Dr. Bombay. I tell you, there's nothing wrong with me and I'll prove it. There's a mirror at the top of the stairs, right? <gasps> Sam, stop him! Oh. I do wish he'd let me call the doctor. Never mind the doctor. Let's call our insurance man and see if we can get coverage for 21 years of bad luck. 21 years? Three mirrors. Seven years apiece. Oh. <laughs> there. Now we only have 14 years bad luck.
everyone's at the ball, Cinderella toils. Excuse me. Have you cleaned the chimney yet? No. That's on tomorrow's schedule. <laughs> oh, Samantha, why don't you face the truth? That husband of yours hasn't an ounce of ambition. You've been married all these years, and you're still living in this hovel. <sighs> Mother, a hovel is in the eyes of the beholder. And when it comes to ambition, Darren has more drive and works harder than... Sam, have I got... Oh, well, you're not dressed yet. She'll be late for work. I'm not going to work today. I just called Larry and told him I'm taking the morning off. I've decided to play relaxed nine holes of golf instead. Well, if it isn't Horatio Alger. <laughs> Sam, have I got any clean golf shirts? Uh, yes, they're, they're right over here. I just finished them. Good. I'll go up and change. I can hardly wait to try out those new irons I bought. He has his iron, and you have yours. <laughs> Mother. And you're certainly right about his drive. It's taking him right to the golf course. Mother. A man like Darren, who works with ideas, doesn't have to sit behind a desk. An inspiration can strike him anywhere. Really? I wish I was an inspiration. I'd strike him right in the... Mother! <laughs> Knock it off. Blind. Blind as a... woman in love. <laughs> Why, oh, why can't she see that Dum Dum is going no place fast? What he needs is a dose of ambition. Yes. <laughs> Hi, little cousin. Oh, Serena, you made me lose my spoon. I'll get it for you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> what kind of potion are you brewing? Beef stew for tonight's dinner. How dreary. Don't bother asking me to join you. Don't worry. Because I am dining in Paris at Maxime's. I'm impressed. Oh, cousin, I have been traveling in high society. As a matter of fact, I have just been elected entertainment chairman of the Cosmos Cotillion. Really? Who rigged the election? I did. <laughs> Sam, I'm home. Uh, Serena, if you're flying to Paris, hadn't you better fly? Oh, I have plenty of time. I'm not due for 20 minutes. Besides, I'd like to stay and say hello to tall, dark, and mortal. <laughs> I'd rather you wouldn't. Thanks! I'd love to! <laughs> Serena, what an unexpected shock. Oh, well, look who you brought with you. Little Peter Cottontop. Hi, Serena. Hi. Sam. Hi, Larry. How are you? Uh, I'm feeling great. And I owe it all to Darren. He's done it again, Stevens. Well, what did he do this time? Oh, I just closed a deal for Breeze Shampoo to sponsor a television special starring Boyce and Hart. Boyce and Hart? Hey, that's great. Who's boys and heart? They're a very hot young singing team. They're happening. They're now. They're expensive, <laughs> but they're worth it. <laughs> Sam, I, I don't often admit my mistakes, but in this case, I must say I was totally against the idea, and Darren went right over my head and convinced Bree Shampoo to go after the youth market. <laughs> and uh, now, of course, I'm backing him to the hilt. Uh, uh, this is their latest album. Uh, see what you think of it. I'd be glad to. I meant Samantha. You know something, Larry? Those baby blue eyes of yours kind of turn me on. <laughs> uh, Larry, uh, why don't we take our drinks into the den and we can go over the details? Uh, Larry? <laughs> Come on, let's see if we can find something else. Tabitha, you think Emily would like a pair of skates? No, Mommy, she has skates. Oh. I'll have a salesman for you in a moment, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Bates? Mr. Bates! <laughs> He's never around when I need him. Oh, well, don't worry ab about us. We're just browsing. Seats! 
What are you doing? Uh, just taking a little break, Mr. Waterman. A break? From what? You never work. I see you're playing with the games again while I'm swamped with customers. Sorry. Now get out there and do your job. While you still have one. <laughs> Uh, trust me, ma'am, you're always safe with a doll. And this happens to be our newest model, Sassy Susie. It comes with a comb and a brush. And listen. I don't want to comb my hair. Don't bug me. <laughs> now, Susie should come with two brushes, one for each end. <laughs> Do you have a doll that's not quite as sassy as Susie? Uh, well, here's a doll that doesn't talk at all. Well, that's a novelty. We'll take her. All righty. She's only $9.95. Is that cash or charge? Charge. All right. Cashier is right over there. Would you like it gift wrapped? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Tabitha, I'm going to be right over here at the cashier's, okay? Right over there. Okay, Mommy. My, you certainly are a lucky little girl. Going to a birthday party. I know. Have fun while you're a kid, Tabitha. Because when you get to be an old adult like me, you'll have all sorts of things like responsibilities, job, boss. Kids have got a maid in this uptight world. Don't you like being grown up? Uh, sure. But boy, if I could be a kid again. You'd like to be a little boy? I sure would. I had more fun when I was nine years old than I've had in all the years since. Okay, then say it. Say what? Say I wish I were nine years old again. <laughs> oh, I get it. Make believe, huh? All right. I wish I were nine years old again. That's what's so great about being a child. You have time for make-believe. <laughs> make-believe. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Hey! Little girl! Well, little boy, what are you doing behind the counter? I'm not a little boy, Mr. Waterman. I'm your salesman, Irving Bates. <laughs> okay, Sonny. What's the joke? This is no joke. I was just talking to that little girl over there. <laughs> hey! She's gone! <laughs> Larry, I've got to go. And the next time you have such good news, can it wait till I get to the office? Goodbye. Haven't you got time for breakfast? No, I'm late already. I'd better go. What'd Larry want? Oh, some college kid who's thinking about a career in advertising is coming to the office to observe. As if I don't have enough of a workload, guess who Larry's assigning the kid to? Why'd he have to call you at home to tell you that? Well, he figures if I'm gonna get mad, do it on my own time. <laughs> I think it's very decent of Larry to show an interest in a young college person. Yeah, especially one whose father happens to be an important client. Aha! Uh -huh. I better get going. Take good care of that college girl. Did I say it was a girl? No, but you didn't say it was a he, so I figured it must be a she. Oh. Boy. Samantha? Blind faith is unbecoming to you. Mother? Eavesdropping is unbecoming to you. Don't you care that Dum Dum is the prey of some college cutie? <laughs> Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, sucker. Now, Mother, no mortal pulls the wool over a witch's eyes while I'm around. Mother, I want you to promise to butt out. Oh, very well, very well, I promise. Witch's honor. Oh, really, Samantha? I hardly Mother. think... Mother! Oh. Witch's honor. <laughs> Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to give Adam his bath. Serena! Hey, Auntie! What's going down? Little cousin, you got a problem? Not yet, but I'm working on it. How are you at love spells? To be perfectly frank, terrific. In that case, Serena, how would you like to have some fun with Dum Dum? Oh, and Dora, why me? Because I promised not to butt in. <sighs> Hate to be pushy. So you butt in. Oh, Adora. <laughs> You're positively evil. I know, isn't it divine? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sweetheart. Is this not hug for me? Oh, honey, it 
isn't a dollhouse. It's part of Daddy's work. It looks like a dollhouse. Well, um, when miniature houses are used in business, they're called models. Daddy's doing the advertising for a new housing development. I can make it bigger. Never mind. The builders will make it bigger. I'll show you how it works. Now, you see, if you want a larger living room and a smaller dining room, you take this wall and move it there. Witches can do that. <laughs> Looks like the mortals are catching up with us, huh? Now, upstairs, as the family grows, you take this wall and put it here, and you have two bedrooms instead of one. Are you sure Daddy won't give it to me? I'm afraid not, sweetheart. He needs it for his work. Then can I go upstairs and play? Sure. Sam, will you help me get this out of the car? Oh, certainly. It's stuck. No, let me try it. The lock is jammed. Well, you can go out the side door. Okay, let's put this down over here. Strange. I wonder if somebody... If somebody what? Uh, uh, let, let's try the kitchen door. <laughs> this door won't open either. I wonder if somebody what? Hmm. Sam, what's going on? I don't know. But something. Because three doors at the same time can't be a coincidence. It's too coincidental. <laughs> okay, who's the wise witch? Could be any one of your practical joking relatives. And while you try and figure it out, I think I'll climb out the window. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, <laughs> this is great. I'm due at a meeting to deliver my advertising campaign in exactly 45 minutes. Inconvenient, huh? So will you give me a hammer and I'll break the window? I'll call Mother. It's cheaper. Then my way is faster. <laughs> Sam, this is ridiculous. At least you prove there's nothing wrong with a hammer. <laughs> this is no time for levity. I've got to get out of here. Yes, sweetheart. Well, uh, uh, why don't I just pop you outside? But Sam, you know I don't tolerate witchcraft. Okay. Start popping. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. L let me try again. <laughs> Lost your powers? Um, I I I'll check. <laughs> no, just my popper power. <laughs> but don't panic. Uh, not until I try an emergency incantation. Wooden doors don't get the best of me. When I command you, open sesame. That's an incantation? You are in a hurry. I don't have time for poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. We're trapped. Darren? What? Now you can panic. like a slave. Serena, doing housework is one of the joys of living the mortal life. It means you're doing something for someone you love. Well, 
He didn't develop biceps doing it. Instead, uh, why don't you break out and join me in the Maharaja of Jadapur? He's throwing an elephant race. Well, I, I appreciate the thought, but I have a day you wouldn't believe. I have to take Adam to the pediatrician, get Tabitha some new shoes, pick up a dress to wear to a business dinner at the Tate's tonight, and tote that barge and lift that bale. That's on tomorrow's list. <laughs> Mrs. Corby. Mrs. Stevens. I'm surprised to find you at home. Uh, you were supposed to be here ten minutes ago to relieve me. Oh, but there must be some mistake. I thought it was tomorrow at 11. Uh, no, uh, I have you down here for today, and I'm counting on you. Well, yes, Mrs. Corby, but... I can cover for you for a while. How long will it take you to get here? <laughs> uh, about 20 minutes. I'm sorry, and I'll be there as soon as I can. Serena, have I ever asked you to do me any favors? Yes. You've asked me to get lost often enough. Oh, Serena, this is for such a good cause, for sending underprivileged kids to summer camp. Yes, but all you'd have to do is take my place in the lobby of the Huntington Hotel, selling chances to people passing by. It's really very simple. Even you could do it. Somehow, I don't think I'm being flattered. Oh, well, on second thought, forget it. Darren would have a fit. I'll do it! <laughs> um, uh, just one more thing. Would you make that skirt just a smidgen longer? Kill Joy. <laughs> That's better. Whole, sliced, or halves, everything's peachy when you buy barber peaches. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you're picky, pick your peaches out of a barber can. Yeah. Mm. Can you stop for a minute? Yeah, believe me, I need a break. What is it? It's Tabitha in the new playhouse. You have to see this. Come on. <laughs> Sugar, Mrs. Kravitz. I'd ask you to come in, but I have company. <laughs> Bye, Mrs. Kravitz. Isn't that cute? What does she mean, company? Well, you know, imaginary playmates. All children make up someone to play with. Yeah, but... Shh. Hi, sweetheart. Where are you going? to get some drinks for my company. Mr. Jones wants a martini and Mrs. Jones wants a ginger ale. <laughs> Mrs. Jones is a teetotaler. She is? Then I better get her some tea. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> oh, you don't seem to be amused. Oh, Sam, what if there really is a tiny Mr. and Mrs. Jones in there? Oh, Darren, don't be silly. She's just behaving like any normal six-year-old. Now, I just want to make sure she isn't behaving like any normal six-year-old witch. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Can I have a taste of that martini? You want Mr. Jones to drink out of the same glass as you? <laughs> Oops. Lost my head. I wish you and Daddy would find something to do while I'm entertaining. <laughs> Daddy does have something to do. I promised Larry I'd uh, have a slogan for Barbara's Peaches by early this afternoon. I'd better get back on it. I'd better see if Adam's awake. I'm glad you enjoyed your lunch, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. And I'm sorry I burned the meat. Oh, you'd like some more, Mr. Jones? There you are. It's a pleasure to serve a man with a hearty appetite. <clears throat> How do you do? How do you do? Not meaning to trouble you, lass. But I couldn't help all for hearing. And I was wondering if you could spare a morsel for a poor, hungry creature. 
We don't have any more spokes, but we have some roast beef. It's a little burned. Burnt is it, eh? Just the way my mother used to make it. <laughs> a pleasure it is to make your acquaintance. Tim O'Shanter's the name. How do you do? This is Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Oh, well, how do you do, Mr. Jones? No, that's Mrs. Jones. <laughs> Excuse me. And what might your name be? Tabitha. Would you be after getting me a bit of food? It's fairly starving I am. Help yourself. There's nothing there. <laughs> there he is. No, there's not. You eat what's in front of you, or else you don't eat at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you've got a delightful sense of humor, me darling. And now that we've had our little laugh, would you be after getting me some real food, you little sweetheart? I'll see what I can find. <laughs> a darling girl. A darling girl. Weird, but, uh, darling. Will you stop stalling and start doing your thing? What do you think I brought you here for? Oh, that I will, oh, gracious queen. I'm not your queen. And get up off your knees. You see, it's just that I'm in need of a bit of sustenance, and it's terrible hard to work on an empty stomach. You'll find it even harder if I turn you into a toadstool. <laughs> now get going. <laughs> Darren, hmm? do you really remember our first date? Are you kidding? I'll tell you exactly what you wore. It was a red silk dress with buttons up the front. It was pink, it was wool, and it zipped up the side. Oh, pink, red, same difference. We had dinner at the lobster. No, we wanted to have dinner at the lobster, but you forgot to make the reservation, so we ate at the automat. What next? <laughs> Well, then we either went to a movie, a concert, or took a walk along Fifth Avenue. Who cares? Somewhere, sometime, that night, I kissed you for the first time. Oh, yeah, you do remember. <laughs> I think I'm getting sick to my <laughs> Mother. So that's my darling. Darwin. Oh, a celebration. It was up until a second ago. Darwin. A Darwin. Uh, we, we were just having the Tates over for dinner. Then why an anniversary cake? Oh, I got it for nothing from the baker. Someone canceled a party, so we had to come up with an anniversary to go with it, and we did. Our first date. Why not celebrate the sinking of the Titanic? What I'd really like to celebrate is your departure. Sorry you can't stay for dinner. Thanks. I'd love to stay. Oh, oh, Mommy, you don't really want to stay for dinner. No, but he just talked me into it. <laughs> A guest never comes empty-handed. This is for you, darling. Oh, thank you, Mother. What is it? Well, it's a little something that's been cluttering up my closet for centuries. I thought you might enjoy it. <gasps> Mother! <laughs> Mother, thank you. That looks almost like the Mona Lisa. And why not? It was painted by the same artist, Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> it can't be. You want to bet? <laughs> Here's some more coffee, sweetheart. Oh, thanks. Uh, Sam? Uh-huh? Will you give me your opinion on this Mother's Day card? The rose looks wilted. Now read the poem. In all the world there is naught dearer to us than the thought that other loves may quickly perish, but mother's love we always cherish. Oh. In my opinion, the poem goes great with the rose. That's not the opinion of Augusta Sunshine. Who's Augusta Sunshine? Owner and head writer of the Happy Heart Greeting Card Company. Their sales have been slipping, and Mr. Sunshine can't understand why. Oh, why don't you show him in red and white? Why don't I forget about business and let's go to a movie? Oh, okay. I'll get Esmeralda. Yoo-hoo, Esmeralda, yoo-hoo. 
Good evening, Samantha. Good evening, Mr. Stevens. Good evening, Esmeralda. How are all the guys and gals in the cosmos? I wouldn't know. I only care about one guy, Ramon Verona. Tonight, I have a date with him. Oh, dear. Now, we were hoping you could babysit. Well, any other time, but I couldn't cancel him now. Not after all that pleading. <laughs> he was pleading with you? No, I was pleading with him. <laughs> That's our little game. Ramon plays hard to get and I play a cinch. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, have a good game. <laughs> well, by process of elimination. Uh, mother? Mother? <laughs> Races. Just once, couldn't your mother come into a room in a normal way? Uh, how did you do? I won. <laughs> but I was disqualified because my wheels were off the ground. Well, your wheels are on my rug, and I'll thank you to get them off. He sounds huffy to me. Does he sound huffy to you? Uh, um, mother, we, we were wondering if you'd mind babysitting while we go to a movie. I would have loved to. Except the Durwood's been huffy to me. I'm not being huffy. Yes, you are. And one more word and I'm leaving. Okay. That's the word. <laughs> Sam, don't you have anything to say? In all the world, there is naught dearer to us than the thought that other loves may quickly perish. But mother's love, we always cherish. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to go to the movies anyway. Sweetheart, there is a way to make mother more friendly. Okay, let's hear it. Well, there's this magic amulet. Forget it. I've got enough magic in my life. Oh, really? Present company accepted. I didn't want to go to the movies anyway. I think I'll wear the gray knit to Larry and Louise's tonight. The gray knit? Uh-huh. Not the one with the plunging neckline. Well, you loved it the last time I wore it. Well, so did a lot of other guys. It's the only thing I have that Louise hasn't seen. Sam, the client and his wife are from Boston. They're against open-toed shoes. Oh. Well, maybe I'll wear a sweatshirt under it. <laughs> if we go at all. If? Oh, I've been trying to get Esmerella since yesterday. I can't seem to reach her. Here I am, Samantha. Hello, Mr. Stevens. Good morning, Esmeralda. I couldn't possibly babysit tonight. Oh, well, uh, uh, why don't you materialize and tell me all about it? All right. Where have you been? I have been devastated. I don't feel up to babysitting. What happened? Well, you remember a few weeks ago I went out with Ramon Verona. Oh, yes. Uh, he's the salad chef at the Warlock Club. Of course. <laughs> anyway, it was a shocking experience. Did he make a pass at you? No, and I've never been so insulted in all my life. <laughs> he's been dating that little witch in the hat check room. Oh, you know her type. Dresses up to here and false eyelashes down to there. There's nothing in her head. With those legs, who needs a head? <laughs> uh, Esmeralda, would you mind going upstairs and looking in on Adam? All right, but I can only stay a short time. <laughs> well, uh, we have two alternatives. What's the second one? Don't you want to know the first? The first is your mother. What's the second one? I could call Dr. Bombay. That quack? I'd rather have your mother. Oh, Darren. Esmerelle is in such terrible shape. He might know a way to cure her depression. Swell. And after he does that, who's going to cure my depression? Oh, I'll think of something. Anyway, we'll be helping Esmeralda and helping ourselves at the same time. OK. Bombay it is. Only, uh, Sam, don't call until I'm out of firing range. 